All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, another quick safety video. Um, this one I'd like to talk a little bit about face coverings. Um, now, you know, with, with Connecticut's numbers so low, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've noticed people, you know, being um, uh, less in tune to wearing their masks. I think everybody's starting to get really comfortable. Um, some people even told me that, you know, it doesn't exist anymore. I don't think that's true. I think it's still here. I think it's going to be here for a while. I think we still need to remain diligent, especially in the job site. Um, when we're out in the job site and we wear these face coverings, it's to protect everybody. It's to protect me. It's to protect you. Um, now that we've been wearing these things for a while, there's a lot of new research going uh, going on out there. and People are really looking at, you know, what is the base, uh, the best face covering, what's really effective, what's not. Um, as we get into this, we're starting to find out some things weren't as efficient as we thought when we started. Some, they are saying, could be even worse uh, than not wearing a mask. Um, so one of those items happens to be the neck gaiter. Um, these happen to be like a spandex fleece material, um, very thin. It's, it's made to keep you cool. It's made to let air in and out easily um, and it doesn't do a good job of capturing the droplets that come out of your mouth. Uh, one, of the, one of the main concerns about this neck fleece is it's single layer. Uh, CDC recommends no matter what type of homemade cloth face covering you use that it be at least multi-layer. You know, So maybe that's something to consider if you're going to continue to wear one of these that the, neck, the thin neck gaiters aren't efficient on their own. Um, maybe you can fold it and double it up and make it a little bit more efficient. Um, you know, I'm not an expert. Um, and I know as the colder seasons start to come, we'll probably start wearing the heavier uh, fleece and cotton neck gaiters, which will probably, uh, you know, somewhat give us a lot more protection. Um, one of the other items the CDC had always mentioned was bandanas. Um, and bandanas are safe to use or effective to use if they're done per the CDC recommendations. Um, the CDC recommendations for one state that it should be cotton. Uh, so this one right here is a 100% cotton bandana. And you can feel the, the weight difference. This bandana right here is 100% polyester. And it's a lot thinner and I could, I, could, I could see through it. That's how thin it is. Um, so this one really isn't gonna offer the protection that a 100% cotton one will. They're also not meant to be just folded in half um, and worn, you know, like cowboy style, I'd call it, you know. Um, this was to keep the dust out of the cowboys' mouths while they were riding and, and uh, rustle and stare. Um, not really meant to keep water droplets in. And, you know, you sneeze and the thing comes up. Um, doesn't really do an effective job. Uh, CDC recommends you fold it in half and then fold it in thirds. Um, and then roll it in on itself. So efficiently, you'd have up to almost six layers of cotton right here. And it needs to fully cover the mouth and the chin. Um, that would be the most efficient way to, way to uh, wear one of these. Um, that was probably a bad demonstration, but I don't have the elastic bands and, and all the features with me. Um, some of the other styles too we're finding out there, um, a lot of these die cut ones, same thing, single layer fleece, it's not a cotton material, uh, doesn't really stay on your face well, uh, as you talk it pulls off, um, doesn't really offer a lot of protection. Whenever you wear it, you want those, those droplets, I mean, even when we're talking, we don't even know we're doing it, but there are droplets coming out of our mouths, and um, to have those come out and not really do any good doesn't make a lot of sense. We need to really be mindful of what we're using. I've even seen, these were actually given out um, through a supplier, and, and these are very thin, thin, thin foam. Um, I really don't know how effective they are. I don't have any details on them. I don't have any instructions on them, but I've seen these around, and you know, they, they're very comfortable, but they, they offer little to no protection. Um, I think sometimes that is just a, you know, a, a false sense of security. Um, really what the CDC is recommending would be the best and we have them available for you guys you know because we really want to protect ourselves we want to protect each other we want to protect our families you know and these medical masks obviously are the better choice 
Um, they're a little more difficult to wear. Um, they're not easy on, easy off. Um, you know, you really don't want to be touching your face a lot. Uh, you don't want to be adjusting your masks a lot. Um, we also have the KN95 styles. These are probably right now will probably offer the most protection. Uh, these are still a lot harder to find. These are really reserved for uh, people in the medical field. Um, these really cover your mouth well. They got the pinch points so you're not fogging your glasses. They cover the bottom of my chin. They do a really nice job of sealing in those germs. Uh, one of the other things that the CDC um, is um, not fond of is the uh, respirator valves here. These uh, these little exhalation valves. Um, what they do is they're almost counterproductive because they're made to let those water droplets come out so they don't gather inside the mask. And you'll see these on a lot of the other um, generic face masks that people wear for mowing the lawns and stuff like that. That helps, um, you know, uh, helps protect us from Got you know um, how you put it, just getting too much moisture in there. Let's it helps this mask breathe. So when you have to wear this in a situation where you really need respirator protection, that it's not getting uh, ruining the mask while you're wearing it with all that extra collected moisture. But it's really counterproductive to the cause. And once again, even if you were going to wear these, now these should be reserved for the right place and in the right time. Um, so basically. That's pretty much what I, the message I want to get out to you. Just want to educate you a little bit on the types of uh, masks out there. Once again, the materials to be used. You know, any homemade face covering is pretty pretty good as long as you follow the CDC guidelines of multiple layers and 100% cotton. Uh, it's usually your best bet. Um, obviously, I'll give you some links uh, so you guys can check out some of this information for yourselves. Um, and have a good day and be safe.